Food or pepperoni pizza? Sports or the Boston Red Sox? What just happened? Instantly when we moved from food to pepperoni pizza, you had a visual. Instantly when we moved from sports to the Boston Red Sox, you had a visual. Providing strong visuals in your interview answers is critical to success. I have personally seen this help thousands of job interview candidates like you dramatically increase their success rate by implementing strong visuals in their interview answers, especially when it comes to building connectivity with your interviewer and keeping your interviewer engaged. And the crazy part, Google visuals and job interviews, and you really won't find any results. So why is this so important? Because visuals make your message more effective and make the inf information more engaging. Remember, your interviewers are not incentivized to show up. They're not incentivized to give you 100% of their attention. So keep them interested with strong visual details. In this video, we are going to focus in on three areas. We're going to quickly dive through some general topics and considerations. Then we're going to heavily focus in on where to share these details in both your behavioral and hypothetical answers. And we're going to provide some sample examples as well. And then lastly, I want to provide a quick story at the end, so watch the entire video. Let's dive in. So for general topics, first, it just clarifies concepts. Visual aids help your interviewers to see what you're talking about. They make it easier for them to understand your contributions and the impact of your work. And this clarity can be particularly beneficial when you're setting up your story and your behavioral answers and when you're making assumptions in your hypothetical answers. And we'll tackle both those subjects in depth in part two. Now, second, it engages your interviewer. Visuals will make your answers more engaging and memorable. Interviewers are drawn to images and this can make and help them maintain their interest while you're answering and it can make your answers overall feel more dynamic. In addition, when interviewers are cleaning up their interview notes later on after the interview's already been conducted, they're going to remember your answers because they'll have a visual connection to them. Third, it demonstrates role-specific skills. Using visuals effectively can showcase your proficiency in the desired area or areas of need for the specific role you're interviewing for. Now next, it definitely demonstrates overall strong communication skills. Using visuals in your interview answers shows that you know how to present information in a clear, concise, and visual appealing manner. And it also shows you're capable of summarizing information in an accessible format. Both are valuable skills in any and all jobs. Lastly, it does facilitate strong storytelling and it helps you stand out and be remembered. Stories are more easily remembered than abstract information. I'm going to remember your example of eating pepperoni pizza at the Red Sox game, but I won't remember your example of eating food at a sporting event because Interviewers are humans, and we just simply cannot remember the generic, but typically we can remember only very specific items. So let's dive into part two. Where does this show up in our interview answers? And really, it shows up everywhere. Let's start on the behavioral side of things. Behavioral questions are questions that start with, tell me about a time when, give me an example of, etc. And I recommend for these types of questions, always using the STAR method situation, task, actions, and results. Now let's use the sample question. Tell me about a time that you helped a client increase their revenue. So starting with your situation and task, this is really setting the context. This is so critical, so important. And this is absolutely the most important part of your behavioral answer to provide visuals because your situation is similar to the beginning of a good book, a good movie, if we can instantly draw our audience in, they will stay more engaged for the rest of our answer. For example, many candidates might answer that question like, this is an example from my current job. We needed to help a client increase their revenue requiring collaboration of a number of critical stakeholders. Let me tell you what I did to help this client. So, okay, we know a couple of details, but just sprinkling in a few visuals can make all the difference. 
This is an example from my current job as an account executive at Google, focusing in on selling ads to enterprise clients in the retail space. We needed to help a brick and mortar and enterprise yoga clothing company in the U.S. increase their revenue by 5% using YouTube ads in 2023. We needed to collaborate across sales, marketing, and product teams distributed across the U.S. Let me tell you what I did over the final six months of 2023 to help this client exceed their target. The difference, your interviewer knows more about your role in company and AE at Google, the types of customers you work with, enterprise slash retail, the specific type of client you're helping in this story, an enterprise yoga retailer. They know how you're specifically going to help them, YouTube ads, and they know the specific stakeholders are sales, marketing, and product. And lastly, they even know the specific percentage increase in timeline to do it, increase it in six months, the last six months of 2023. Now, let's move on and let's highlight the difference in actions. So I'm just going to provide and do it on one specific action instead of the entire answer. And then we're going to show a generic versus a more visual approach. For example, many candidates might provide an action such as, I spoke with multiple stakeholders to outline and execute on the strategy we had helped create with this client. Okay, great. I know stakeholders, I know strategic vision, but let's bolster this action a little with some great visuals. I started the planning phase by engaging with other enterprise account executives, account managers, and account strategists throughout the U.S. meeting over Google Meets. We reviewed the 10 most successful YouTube ad campaigns that we had run for retailers in 2022. We identified five specific areas to increase revenue, including focusing in on items like demographics and ad placement. Lastly, we mapped out our initial strategy on how to target users with watching instructional YouTube videos by using non-skippable in-stream ads. So now your interviewer knows more about who you met with and how you met with them, other sales leaders over Google Meets, exactly what you reviewed, 10 successful YouTube ad campaigns from 2022, a couple of target areas to focus in on increasing revenue, demographics and ad placement, and the specific strategy, non-skippable in-stream ads during instructional YouTube videos. So lastly, let's discuss the difference in results. For example, and the results were we exceeded the client's increased revenue target and they were really happy. This is a really standard answer for many of my clients, what I've seen from many candidates when it comes to the results. Again, let's just enhance a little bit with visuals. The client was extremely happy happy when we more than doubled our target and increased the revenue to 11% by the end of 2023. In addition, we were able to repurpose ads we use during instructional yoga videos for instructional Pilates and more general in-home workouts as well. Lastly, the overall strategy we used for this retailer became a use case for our account executives supporting retail clients in both EMEA and APAC, and I know it has been successfully cloned for at least three other large enterprise retail clients. So now your interviewer knows more about the specific increase in revenue, 11%, how this strategy informed other methods for increasing revenue, Pilates and more general in-home workout videos, and how it was repeatable, talking about how it was repeated in EMEA and APAC and three specific instances where it was successful. You can see throughout this answer, the amount of extra detail will definitely add time to your answer, but we've removed any doubt about the specifics. Now, Let's flip the coin and talk about how we implement visuals in our hypothetical answers. So hypothetical questions are questions that start with, how would you, what would you do? I want you to imagine you're in X scenario, et cetera. And I recommend for these types of questions using the CFAST method. That's clarify, framework, assumptions, solutions. Now, typically your clarification questions and framework should be more general. And you will not need to bring great visuals into your answers in these two areas. But as you transition into your assumptions and solutions, providing strong visuals will help keep your interviewer engaged and provide shape and clarity when answering a question that likely has tons of ambiguity. And let's use the sample question 
how would you help a client increase their revenue? So instead of tell me about a time when you did it, how would you go about doing it? And we always want to solve these questions like we're in the role. So let's dive into the assumptions. This is really setting the context for your solutions. And this is the most important part of your hypothetical answer to provide visuals. Because without visuals and your assumptions, you're solving for something your interviewer will not be able to picture. If we can outline what we're solving for, they will be more interested in your solutions. Very similar to the situation and task on the behavioral side, where they're more interested in the story when they know the setup with good visuals. For example, let's make some assumptions. I'm going to assume that I can help this client, this client increase their revenue by running ads. Again, this is a good loose visual, but no details have been included to help me picture the proposed scenario. Let's bolster your, bolster your assumptions with some visuals. Let's make a few assumptions. I'm going to assume that I'm an account executive working at Google and our client is a brick and mortar and online enterprise yoga company in the US that's interested in increasing their revenue by 5% by using YouTube ads in 2024. I need to collaborate across sales, marketing, and product teams that are distributed throughout the US. And the specific way I'm going to try and help this client is by utilizing skippable and non-skippable YouTube ads by targeting instructional yoga YouTube videos. For consistency, I wanted to use similar visuals that we use on the behavioral side of things. So now we are solving like we're in the AE role at Google for a specific type of client working with specific stakeholders on a specific strategy for success. And all the visuals have been clearly outlined. So now as we flip to the solution, it's very common for interview candidates to focus on the high level when solving. So an initial solution might sound like we would want to focus on the organization's overall goals and objectives, focusing in on both the short term and long term. Next, we'd want to explore any historical data they had regarding revenue. We would need to understand the timeline to get things done and what type of budget the client has. Next, we'd want to understand what kind of internal resources they have to drive the revenue using ads. Next would be performing a risk analysis or assessment to understand what happens to the business if we're unable to increase revenue. Lastly, we'd want to gather the critical stakeholders and get alignment on a shared vision for what success looks like for this company. And okay, this solution covers all the basics, but this is more of an outline. This is more of the information that I'd want you to present in your framework. These are simply concepts. I would expect a candidate to introduce this as an approach rather than a solution, but this is what typically happens. And because no visuals have been introduced, it's very difficult for your interviewer to picture you doing it in the role they're interviewing you for. Now on the flip side, if we narrowed our focus and just tried to solve for a couple of items and really focused on the visuals, it might sound something like, I think we should start by focusing in on data and resources. We would start by performing a deep dive into past performance, specifically analyzing the client's past Google advertising campaigns, particularly on YouTube, what type of ad placement we had and what types of videos we placed the ads on. And then we would look at peak purchasing times as well. We would also want to look at the client's yoga products that are the most popular and have the highest margins, for example, yoga pants and yoga hoodies. Then after looking at this past performance, we'd want to conduct a competitor analysis, starting by analyzing how competitors are utilizing YouTube ads, first both yoga and fitness retail items in general, what type of messaging they're using, and where do they appear targeting the prospective YouTube users during these YouTube videos. Now let's dive a little bit deeper into resources by thinking about budget and strategy. We would determine an optimal budget for YouTube ads based on historical ROI of marketing channels, specifically in the retail fitness industry, aiming to maximize reach and conversion within the target increase of 5%. We would need to allocate budget segments for both skippable and non-skippable ads based on both cost effectiveness and their reach to our potential target audience. Strategically, would you do, we would utilize YouTube's advanced targeting options to reach users interested in not only yoga, but wellness and fitness, particularly those watching instructional videos. 
Then we just want to segment our audience based on demographics, interests, and viewing habits to tailor the ad content. And then we can develop engaging and relevant content that resonates with the yoga community. This could include things like testimonials, highlighting the unique value proposition of the yoga clothing, or showcasing the products in use during yoga. I think this is a good starting point. I'm happy to dive deeper into the data or resources, or we can move on and talk about stakeholder engagement. I know that's a lot, um, but this solution dives deep into a couple of critical areas, giving your interviewer a strong idea of how you tackle challenges with strong visuals. Lastly, I just wanted to throw in a silly example here to end the video. A few years ago, I was working with a product manager client. We covered the open a cookie shop question, and he focused on building a cookie shop that specialized in snickerdoodle cookies. You know, this really worked for me because my mother-in-law loves making this type of cookie. And years later, I still remember his answer because of this simple visual. And while this answer may not feel dynamic, I can still remember this example years later because of one critical visual, the type of cookie. The best way to practice adding visuals is start including a little bit more of a visual description when generically communicating with others. See how much more engaged they are by what you're saying. Then apply this trick to all your interview answers. I wish you the best of luck.